Hello, I'm Zach Attack, and let's talk about the tile map editor in Tick80. So first we're going to need a cartridge to show how it works. So let's quickly make a directory called uh, tile map. Let's just call it tile map. Create a tile map folder. Change directory into the tile map folder. If you're not sure what's going on here, I did a whole episode on all the console commands. And then in here, I'm going to run the demo command, which is going to populate, I don't know if they download or if they're just included somewhere in Tick80, but they populate a bunch of stuff. And the one we're interested in is this one, quest. So, uh, load quest, let it autocomplete. There it is. And now if I run it, there's our game. Move around, open the chest. There's a health potion in the chest. Pick up the key, use the key to open the door. So on, and there we go, I died. Okay, if you press escape, in my case I have dev mode on, so it'll kick me back to the code editor. That button there, or F3, because it's F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. F3 switches to the map editor. It kind of looks like four tiles in a grid. This is where we'll be working today. So you'll notice this seems very familiar. This is the tile map layout of that map that we were just playing on. The character isn't visible on here because the character is a sprite and he's entered in runtime. Before we start, let's quickly look at the sprite sheet. In this game, they put all the sprites on the tiles level. You can put map data. This is the map stuff down here can be on tiles and then the sprite people can be on here. But like I also said in the previous video, you don't need to do it that way, whatever works for you. Okay, this is what we're dealing with. And this is how it ends up. So usual buttons at the top, cut, copy, paste, undo, redo, which is control Y. Copy, cut and copy don't really do anything normally in the tile editor. It'll become clear in a second. And then these are the interesting buttons. So the first one is our world map tab. So clicking on there or pressing tab gives us an overview of the whole tile map. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight panels, eight times the screen of tick 80 across and down which means in this view, each individual pixel represents an eight by eight tile placed on our map. This red rectangle here is the one we're currently looking at, this one, which it exactly maps to one full screen of the game, the exception being that there's eight pixels used for the bar up there that occupies the top row. And then there's a grid so we can see where the pixels are going. The second button on here shows or hides that grid. It's the back tick, the, the key to the left of your one key on your keyboard. will hide the grid or show it again. Although these grid lines won't disappear because those indicate the edges of these. You'll see that I'm slightly across that edge there, slightly across that edge there. Okay, that's what that one does. Now we get to our toolbox. The same as before, one, two, three, four is mapped to one, two, three, and four. Number one is our pencil tool, in which I can click on a thing and fill in the sprite that I currently have selected. These can also be larger sections. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, the second one is a pan tool. Clicking on that or the drag tool. Clicking on that allows me to drag my map around. This is much more useful than on the sprite sheet, actually, or on the code editor to be able to drag my way around the map like this. But as was with the code editor, if I hold the right mouse button, I can also drag my way around. And interestingly enough, holding spacebar puts me into drag mode, the same as I think in Photoshop, which is also quite handy. The area select tool. You'll notice that from a previous time I recorded this video, there's stuff stuck on my cursor. So let's just quickly get rid of that. Select tool. Select a, sec select a section of the map. Let's select a little tombstone and some stuff around it. Now the copy and cut becomes useful. If I cut, it sets it to sprite zero, which is usually blank. If I were to 
select it and copy. The selection disappears, but it doesn't give me any positive feedback that that happened. But if I now paste, I get that selection stuck to my mouse, which I can paste anywhere by just clicking. And I can do that again, and I can do that again. Okay, that's when cut, copy, and paste works as predicted. Unlike the sprite editor, if I have a section selected, the arrow keys will still pan. Oh, did I mention the arrow keys can pan? But they cannot shift a selection in any kind of direction. It doesn't work, and to be honest, it wouldn't make sense the way this the tile map works to be able to clicky clicky things over left and right. Bucketful tool. This one, which is number four on the number row, will fill an area with my selected tile, but it will only fill the tiles that are exactly the same as the ones next to them. So if I click on this one, it fills all that area. Why did it not fill this one and this one, this one and this one? Because as you can see, they have little dots on them because they are actually different sprites. This one with the key is an entirely different sprite than the ones that were just filling the ground. So just because things look the same does not mean they are the same. Okay, that's the full tool. And then lastly, I've been talking about the pencil tool and the full tool and so on, but I've not explained where you get your tiles. That little button in the corner is a drop down for show tiles, or you can hold shift, not press it, hold shift. There's my tiles sprite sheet, the first one on my sprite thing. There, tiles. If I hold shift here, tiles. Another icon appears next to it, that's to switch to sprites, but then it switches to an entirely different map view, and I personally have not figured out how to use this. So map data is on our, or tiles are on our tiles part of our spreadsheet. And then from here, I can select what I want to draw. So if I click on uh, that little guy, click on it, I can click somewhere to put them put him down. His background's the wrong color, but that's not the point. So I now place that guy there. I can also put one there. I can also put one there. Alternatively, if I want to place this portal thing, I can drag select across it and then click somewhere and it would place that whole thing. There's also repeat. So let me just find a blank piece. If I had a single tile selected, say this lava tile, this X tile, click and drag and it will fill each tile that I move over with that tile. If I select a larger section, like say this word quest, and I drag, it will not fill the rest section until it has completely cleared the first one. So it effectively repeats the set of tiles that I have in hand across as I drag. And that's it. The tools in here are way more basic than in the sprite sheet, so it's much easier to explain. But now that you've drawn all this stuff, how do you use it? Well, we've completely ruined this part of the map, but that's fine. In code, the same as you would use the sprite command. Let me just find it. It's in the tick function. Went, to, went looking for it earlier. Same as you use the sprite command, SBR, to draw a certain number sprite on screen with its X and Y coordinates. In this case, you use the command map. In this case, they're feeding in the position of the camera, the size of a cell, and then for width and height, it's cell width and cell height. They've got constants set up for that. But this is essentially like drawing a sprite to screen, but instead of giving it a sprite ID, you would be giving it the coordinates for where you want the sprite sheet to begin. So for instance, 224, that's tile number 24, 224 at position 0, 0. So if nothing else, that's where it would start drawing. If you want to see how the, the map command works, you type help map. And it will tell you in detail, the map command is from the API. There's what you pass to it. There's color key scale remap. I'm not sure what remap does. And then a detailed description of how that command works to get this into this.
Oh, I've kind of ruined the map now, haven't I? Anyway, that's kind of the point. The point of this whole thing is to draw art and have fun.